Hello, artsy friends. We are on day four of the Ugly Art Club's five minute challenge, and the prompt for today is pine cone. Now, the inspiration that I took for this one is the colors. Um, when I think pine cone, I was really thinking fall colors and those autumn type of vibes. So that's as much of the prompt that I used for inspiration for today. So feel free to let loose a little bit with the rules. You don't need to hold yourself so tight and rigid to them unless you're wanting to. Um, it's okay to take as much or as little inspiration as you want. It's okay to be super realistic or totally abstract with the prompts. Do what fits best in your art practice and make sure that it's um, enhancing you. It's not limiting how you're creating, but instead it's helping you to progress wherever you are at right now. So I started out with some acrylic ink and I know you're thinking, Brooke, we just went through this on the last one and you said that it was a mistake to use it in the five minute challenge. Well, if you remember, I also said, I don't listen to that and um, I'm not going to learn from it. So the one thing I did do is I did not add additional water to the acrylic ink. I tried to limit myself a little bit. The cardstock that I'm also using as the base, it just happened to be that I had several off cuts that were already right around the same size. And that's all the thought that went into what kind of paper I was using as a base. Um, it's not a mixed media paper, it's just a card stock. And so it actually absorbs the water quite a lot and it absorbs it differently than other papers do. So that's always a big thing that I li like to experiment with is how your paper is going to absorb any excess liquid, any water, and your supplies will work differently depending on the types of paper that you're using, whether it's a store-bought or found paper or vintage, whatever it may be. So I started out with a transparent raw sienna color and um, then added with my finger some white gesso kind of fingerprint marks. I like how it blended and immersed with the ink that was already on the paper. I didn't want true um, marks on there that were just like pure white. If I had wanted that, I would have had the ink dry completely first before coming back in with the white gesso. So um, my intention was for it to really kind of blend with the ink and the, the wet liquid that was already on the page. Now I'm adding in some different collage type elements. I'm thinking about different patterns, different prints. For me, text is always a print I love, or a pattern, I mean. Um, I love the way that that looks. I'm using some, um, the cardstock, the craft cardstock is a um, repeating pattern stamp that I have carved out. The um, bottom is a ledger paper and now I'm taking my brush that already had some pigment on it with the white gesso and it's all blending together and I'm making those collage elements look like they're not just placed on top and then left there. They're really becoming part of the overall paper and being cohesive with everything that's going on around it. Another big inspiration that I took for this one is the supply that I wanted to use. Um, sometimes I know that going into it. And so I have this lace here and this um, orange rust colored fabric. Both of those are from a... Um, a recycled garment. They're from a dress, I believe. The The one I'm ripping right now, that is from the lining of the dress, and then the lace is um, the overlay. And so I just love those a lot. And so I find a lot of my my textiles and fabrics from recycled places. You can do it if you go thrifting and try to find those. A lot of times, um, 
I buy my clothes because I love the textures of them. I don't buy them with the intention that I'm going to then rip them up. It just happens that my taste in clothes and textiles end up being really great ones when I'm done with them that I can actually turn them into something else. Um, instead of just throwing them away, I either will donate or tear them up to use them in different stuff. So I'm just layering some of those fabrics together. Um, I also have just another little pattern piece of fabric. I think it's great to be able to combine the solids with all the prints and that's where it gets really interesting. So my timer here did go off. Um, so I'm just stapling these on instead of using the sewing machine or stitching. Um, it's just a quicker solution. Plus, I like that the staples add in another uh, texture. They're another material added in there. Now, at the end of these five minutes, I actually really like how this turned out. I could fully be happy if it was done here. But since I already had threaded my needle earlier, I decided to keep going just a little bit and add some stitching. It looks like I forgot to knot the end of my thread there. Um, so having that needle already threaded, having some of those textiles that inspire me already pulled, having the colors that I want to use and maybe some of the papers on hand, that really helps me to work quicker. It helps to know that there's an idea already in mind. So when I am working regularly, I don't set that five minute timer. Um, that's just part of the challenge that I'm doing here. So it's kind of fun to see how close I can get to that five minutes and be happy with my spread. But without doing some prep ahead of time, without preparing a little bit and having that idea in mind, I would not get nearly as far as I do here. So um, sometimes that can mean having the papers already done and on hand. And I will say that in my regular art practice, having materials already made ahead of time is one of the biggest things that I can do to feel like you're actually making progress when you go to make something and you want to feel like you're being productive. So to have papers that are made ahead of time, that are pre-drawn um, on, that have the patterns on them, to make maybe little clusters ahead of time, to tear your fabric up so it's in usable sizes. You know, when we recycle textiles, they're in a, you know, maybe it's a sweater or a dress like this. Well, it's really not very usable if you if you leave it in its whole in its entirety. So I definitely suggest ripping that down or cutting it down into more manageable bite sized pieces. And you're much more likely to be using um, those different textiles and fabrics that you have on hand. I decided to add just a little bit of stitching onto this um, area up in the left hand corner that has the fabric going on, not necessarily for uh, attaching it for the security sake because it's already attached with those staples, but I just like that added texture and the added look that it gives. I think stitching is always a really fun way to add in simple looking marks, but the texture that it adds, I think is really beneficial because it's not just laying flat on your page. There's a little bit of dimension there. Um, I've also taken to tying some of my knots on the front of the page and just letting them be shown rather than hiding them off behind. Okay, so now I'm doing my little complimentary page here. Another reason that I decided to work this way um, and do my journal this way for this project was I think it's a fun challenge for myself to be able to have a two page spread that is very cohesive, but to work on them at two separate times. I mean, I know I'm doing it all in one sitting, but I'm not thinking at all about that second spread until that first one is done, which is very different to the way that I normally work. I normally work on both sides of the spread or the top and the bottom all at the same time, um, just so that it gets that cohesive uh, feeling to it. So I like that this is challenging me to think about it um, secondary and not right away, but to make it all feel like it's a cohesive unit. So I started out with a heavy body paint with my finger 
um, tip to make some of those fun marks, not doing the repetitive pattern across the whole page, um, but still adding in. And then with that white gesso on top, adding in some marks as well. Now I did not let that first fingerprint mark dry. So the white gesso will blend with what's underneath, which is the um, intention that I was going for. Uh, I did add just a few little fingerprint marks onto the bottom main spread um, while I was at it, just because I feel like it feels cohesive now with the entire uh, page that I'm working on. A few final little pencil scribbles will be the final touch that I am adding. And just like that, I think I'm all done with today's uh, pine cone inspired spread. I hope that you guys will join me tomorrow for day number five. See you next time.